We prayed, it was a very big deal, and um, Kara had already been through a lot. She had been orphaned and coming to live with us. We had had her for about a year, year and a half when she was diagnosed. She um, doesn't have unexplained scoliosis like many adolescents do. She actually has something wrong with the vertebrae that's closest to her tailbone. It's fused on one side, so her spine started at a slant and a curve, you know, probably as a baby. When we deal with congenital scoliosis, it's a little bit different than idiopathic scoliosis, depending on the location of the congenital malformation. So what congenital scoliosis means is that one of the bones of the spine didn't develop like the other bones of the spine. They normally they call the hemivertebra. Now this can be very complicated if the hemivertebras are in the middle of the spine, meaning that the bones are no longer shaped like rectangles, they're shaped like triangles. And you can have one or two or three of these bones in the middle of the spine can create very uh, dramatic curvatures in opposite directions, it can be very difficult to manage. But with Kara, what's good is that her congenital malformation is the very last bone of her spine, which is the best or the easiest form of congenital scoliosis to manage. And in fact, I see patients that are diagnosed with idiopathic scoliosis that actually have some of this congenital malformation in the sacrum. So it's not uncommon, actually. And it's unsure to know what the impact that congenital malformation is actually having on her full scoliosis, but it's, it's, it's a component. So we take that into play when we're taking care of patients that with this type of problem. We wanted her to have the best possible chance at a normal life and normal activity and to be pain-free as she became an adult and aged. So we took this step to come here. Well, the results have been very good so far. So like, they make me feel like really good because it started out with the 60 degrees and now I'm at 37. So that's a big difference. So Kara's a great success at how we call this leapfrogging. Like we've reduced the curve and we stabilize it. Sometimes the curve can even reduce with our home therapy, like with Kara, because it's so aggressive. Our bracing is so aggressive, our home therapy is so aggressive that it actually reduced some just with her doing our homework. And then, okay, everything reduced. Well, let's say we have to modify things, you change braces, um, modify the brace, even sometimes get a new brace uh, to reduce it even further. I'm passionate about getting better. So I'm trying to like, decrease my curve as much as I can before I stop growing so that I can like continue doing fun things and not have pain, yeah. It does take strength of character and strength of emotion and determination, consistency. It takes a lot of um, commitment to get through it and get the result that we're getting. I mean, we know that we're doing all the right things on top of praying, on top of supporting, just figuring out a way, you know, to get here, to make the time. She, she deserves the success she's getting. Everything he's told us has come to fruition. So that confirmation that her work is working, you know, that her hard work is making something happen, I think helps urge her along as much as it helps us, you know, that we see it.